Mark, can you unmute yourself just so I'm I'm unmuted and apparently you can hear me. Yes, it's true. Nice. Even Duncan. <laughs> Duncan can too, yeah. Guy with a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no additions or adjustments. Got it. Um, we're gonna skip over reviewing invoices. Um, review and approve minutes from October 3rd. Motion to approve as presented. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. That was Duncan, in case she didn't hear. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Are there any select board issues or concerns? Hearing none. Well, Eric, you're here. We're flying I through. Know, we're flying. <laughs> okay, sure. We're going to have to circle back. To yeah, let's talk. Let's, Jason, uh, you want to give your highway report? So, the grant work on one way, that's all completed. We were almost done that last May. Uh, and uh, up on the hill, Fox Law, that's completed except for we got to finish some hydro season tomorrow. That, that'll be done. Uh, we finished all the roadsides for the second time. We have all the sand hauled from NA Menage. And uh, tough to get from Milton Cab up the greater. Is shipping Tuesday. Is it here Tuesday? No, it's shipping on the ship Tuesday. It missed the week ago shipment. He says it should still come at the time that he said. He feels confident, but that's the greater update as far as I know of today. Well, and then I've um, got okay. two of the four trucks all ready for winter. And that brings me to the salt truck. That's a password for the. Okay. Salt truck, let's hear it. Well, I talked to Andy like, uh, just about a week ago. I was the office. So I was that uh, body we went up all the way. And the. Uh, one of the wells was broke on the hoist, and uh, he said it was still under warranty to bring it down. And I, me and Ryan did, and he looked it over, and they were to fix it. Because they got six hours into it, he called me Friday to let me know that uh, they were going to warranty it. Not because it was a lack of grease, because it was a lack of use. Uh, So I had him do the three pulls that I talked to Brian about. Uh, show the board what it cost to fix correctly, take the dump place out, or just go without the sound. For us to fix it in house is another option that's not on here in our house. I'm a little frustrated with him because he's 10 months old. And I don't know if it's Andy's fault, but the salesman Mike in the previous road foreman respect his truck out, knowing that he's going to have this uh, e box hanger on it. And I think we put it all the way up without taking it all off. Um, same with the Gore tank. Is it, you know, we looked it up, you know, a foot and a half to two feet in the Gore tank, and we're getting towards the end, so it all works the back. Wash it off and stuff. We looked it up in Florida too and put the body box in it, the grease in there, and then we sent it down to Clark's this spring to get grease, a full PM done. So, my truck, I would be forcing it over there, I think. On the warranty issue? Well, there was nothing stated when I picked it up that we had to use the 
body a number of times. Because right. the kid, I don't know if you read the page in there. Yeah. So they're even saying it's not for the last three states, the last years. Yeah. You, do you have a copy of the warranty? I don't, but we know. Um, okay. Perfect. When we get a year under warranty for sure. Oh, yeah, I understand. I mean, if we, if every, all circumstances fall into the warranty and it doesn't explicitly state number of use, we definitely should fight it. Uh, and that we should push back anyway, in my opinion. I agree. Yeah, I, I really feel that a 10 month old truck, you know, be in probably. Yeah, we did maintain it, but even if we didn't maintain it, a 10 month old truck having this kind of failure on it is pretty extreme. Mm -hmm. I personally put a grease gun on the grease bit before we sent it down. You can grease it, the grease comes out the shaft, the tube on each side. But I guess they know this problem is, exists. It doesn't get all the way around inside the tube if you don't use it constantly. So. Yeah, that sounds like a design problem. Not That's what I felt, but that's why I talked to Brian about the email I sent to, if I wanted to, you know, read this before. <clears throat> yeah, so I think we need to put back for sure. Once we have consensus, and I think we also need to. Somebody needs to review the warranty in detail and understand what is and isn't specified in the warranty. Uh, because if there's no reference to underuse, then they don't have a leg to stand on, in my view. So basically, they won't stand on the way it was sold, the way it was designed to be used. We have to pay for a, a redo. That, that is just to get the, whatever they're going to get, they're the pins out and uh, fix them, I guess. Because they're not a serviceable unit, you have to cut the weld and push the pins out. There's no way to get the pins in and out because they're welded them in from the factory that makes the place. I wanted to. Uh, what we find out was likely, I guess, from this uh, after I wanted to kind of look elsewhere, not mainly for the maybe a hoist put in that doesn't have these problems. It really states in there that it's a known problem with this hoist. And I was a little frustrated because I wasn't really involved in inspecting this. I got on the different ones like our other trucks have always had in one piston. So he isn't the he wasn't the tail, he just the service rep down there and wants to charge and say that it's gonna be more people. Well I understand your frustration and being frustrated it's not gonna help anyone. No. And no. yes. How important is it to have a hoist? To have the left. This time of year it's not. That's why one of the options that will be down or else will be down for right now. Because one of the problems I think Evan's aware of that Mark was worried about with this body that's up. the setup with the V box being on the bed when you turn up the corners and stuff, it rocks up pretty good. So Mark's not opposed to holding it down from there either. You mean the, the frame actually racks for the the, the bed the bed lifts because there's so much weight up high in that V box standard style that it puts a lot of weight up top nothing down below so So it sounds like we're pretty well in agreement that uh, uh, Jason and I will review the warranty and push back on this and, and we'll, we'll pull the actual warranty review in more detail about what it actually says to make sure that we've got good ground for, you know, for our case. But I, I, yeah, I can't get over the 10 months old. It's a new truck. We left it outside for 10 months, it should still work. Right. One of the things I stress to him is that I understand that he couldn't make our work. 
how much they said when he said it wasn't very strong, but I had the proof required so that it was a full one B they call it inspect where they went through and released every part of the truck this spring and they camped everything. Um, yeah. It was more of a, you know, verification of what's happening. And uh, if we need to make a decision, you guys are all happy. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Thanks for doing the homework. Um, I think right now, let's just push back. And uh, worst case scenario, if we see a forecast that means we need to salt, like we should have 10 days out. Um, just let make sure I know right away, and if we have to, we can call a special meeting. Is it usable right now? It is if we bring it back and put the cellar on and pull it down, just so it doesn't fall okay. around. Uh, we also did about a year ago purchase a uh, assault spreader for the foreman's truck for the pickup. Uh, it does not do chloride, but it we are not without some capacity. Okay. Okay. We don't have much track record with this dump style. It's not one that I know of. Yeah. No, it, it was a pretty new configuration for, like, I think stem to stern, the whole thing was a pretty new configuration. We bought a lot of dump trucks and such. Yeah. Um, you know, well, if nothing else, um, if, if they're if they're going to stand firm and say that they're not going to cover it under warranty, they should tell us exactly what is not warranted and why, and you know, cite the specific issues. You know, I agree that we should look at the warranty, but I think it's also if they're denying the warranty, it's incumbent on them to say why they're denying it and what provision of the warranty is not there. I agree from that. They, and he said they were denying it because of the lack of use. It was our fault because we didn't use the body. I asked them how the body can be used without taking this sulfur off every time. And he's like, well, it can't be kind of strapped down in the way the chute comes <coughs> out. So, Yet they sold it. So yeah. Even like yeah. the use, it should last longer than 10 months. Yeah. I think we beat this one to death. Yeah. I think we're pretty good. You can't cherry pick a warranty. Well, we can push back and we should. So, yep. So, you have the backing of us to push back. Can you help? Let us know. Anything else, Jason? Did you finish? I finished. Um. Did you and Brian get together and make a note yet? Send out people to ask up in town right away before we have not. season. You should get it out to the people that you know are problematic. We should just do a bulk mailing. That's expensive. I would hope that they know who has stuff to look We right usually put me. something in the paper, you know, during the wintertime. Uh, no plowing across the road, the no parking in, you know, right away. Yada, yada. Yep. But yeah, we, we, for the most part, know people who are regularly problematic. And, you know, if we see somebody, we can speak to them. Uh, you know, somebody who might not be a regular problem, but might currently have some things out in the, uh, in the right of way. Okay, cool. We don't have anything else, we'll keep going. Yeah. All right. Um, let's do review of orders. Um, first up is city cards. So we're gonna circle back to the um, review of invoices and orders, and then we'll do treasurer of the um, City cards. There's a total of $2,839.15 for postage programs, grant funds, building and maintenance, ARPA grant expense. What is the ARPA grant expense? Library expense. Thank you. Um, printing and publishing. And what is the printing and publishing? That's for the um, ads for the community development person. 
that's a indeed. Yes. Okay, that's twelve hundred fifty-five dollars and fifteen cents. And he's going to call out anything over like three hundred dollars. Professional training five hundred four hundred fifty-five dollars and fifty-two cents. Office supplies, uh, tree board expenses of two hundred forty-five dollars and forty-four cents. I lied. I meant two hundred. <laughs> Beautification acquisitions and soccer for five hundred thirty-eight dollars and sixty-five cents. I assume that's t-shirts. Um, this equipment. equipment. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dale Percy Inc. Uh, construction projects for stone plant mix, $2,246.80. Plant mix, $5,689.75. If you want have questions about any of these, please stop me. Uh, Fisher Auto Parts, coupler, $59.85, and oil. Under the salt sand, is that right? Right. Either oil or salt, I assume it's oil, for 1080 uh, 68. So going to make a correction there. Green Mountain Trailers, Twist Lock Remote, $281.70. Cylinder Supplies, 1990. Cylinder Lease, uh, $320.50 for a total of $340.40. Oh, sorry, I mixed those up. Um, $281 for the lock was for Green Mountain Trailers, then Han Welding Supply was the other items I listed. Han is a total of $340.40. Ironwood Precision LLC, remove AC units at the library, $75. Johnson Hardware and Rental. Soccer, $13.81. Lamoille County Treasurer, taxes, the county tax, uh, $23,700. Lamoille County Sheriff's Department, quarterly payment, $127,775. Uh, and the quarterly payment for dispatch is $17,171.50. Milton Cat uh, Service, $794.14. Monash Sand, $674.65. RL Valley Fuel, $90.47. Uh, Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher, sometimes I get the names, sometimes I can't. $3,233.35. Village of Johnson, due from. Um, for office, admin salaries, holiday, sick, vacation, social security, insurances, eye insurance, basically benefits, um, car charging station, postage, office supplies, water, sewer, heat, building supplies, building maintenance, and water, sewer, $24,064.32. Mm -hmm. And Jasmine Uris, community oven, $149.31. Is Ironwood Precision, is that by your career? Yes, it is. Okay, what else you got for us, Rosemary? Somebody can down a budget status report. Actually, I got that part out. Um, this and this. Whatever it is. That, was that in the file? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have one, Brian? I got those. Yep. Do you need one, Nathan? Um, Um, we got the uh, preliminary uh, school tax thing has been corrected. And today our taxes are at 99.7%. We got half of our um, state aid. Now this is year, this is the first quarter. This is year end. This is quarter. for the up to up to today for this year for current year. Okay. 
we should be getting our current use money at the end of the month. I'm sorry, how are, are we at that rate for taxes? If... That's billed, not collected. Okay. Thank you. So the reason the word minimum is seven is there correct your tax bills, etc. And the state would do another true up in April. And the we're at 24.07% for the budget. Just about right. Mm -hmm. Jason mentioned we had something in that uh, signs, and it was really for um, just just control. Is there anything that um, you're worried about? We should be thinking about. Not yet. It's hard to tell because we haven't gone through the winter season, the spring. We haven't done our big paving projects yet. Yeah. Right. So this is the easy time to be worried if we're going to be worried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're worried now. We're in trouble. Right. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. Well, that's why we should ask. <laughs> I guess this is budget related, but it's also highway related. We we are under the assumption that hike is not going to come <clears throat> um, this year. Thank you for bringing that up. I, I did speak to Pike. They are not coming this year. Uh, they are going to uh, come in the spring and, and do everything. Um, they are holding our prices level. So. We'll be able to complete the project in, in, in the spring when weather permits. Uh, I should have a more detailed email to, to share about that. So, you got a firm date when the grader's coming in? No, we don't. Uh, what did you say? It's shipped? It's shipped. <laughs> oh, okay. So the Jason was saying the vendor thinks that the timeline that they reported before was just in the next same. couple of weeks, it's like, like three or four weeks, I think, um, is still on track. Okay. So I'll need to get to the bank and get some notes made up for you guys. If yeah. we're not gonna pay Clay Hill this year, Jason, if you have either the coal patch or the time to do it. There are a couple of potholes on the on Clay Hill that might be worth. Yeah, there's a couple that are right past the intersection of School Street. And there's a couple up uh, in the middle of the building that uh, you can exit there a little deeper so the stuff would stay, but we'll we can throw some stuff on them. And I have a request for a board of abatement, so I don't know when you guys want to set that meeting up. Okay. Um, we have statutory timelines that we have to deal with once the no. do it before regular in November. First, 
before you're I, I know. I think okay. I'd prefer to do it if we could do it. We have a couple of weeks, right? I'd prefer to do it that first week of November if we could. We need to middle of the week discuss about that one because it's right the day before our election. Uh, okay. Yeah. And the rooms could be all set up. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe the week after then. I'd like to, do it, you know, when she set up before Thanksgiving because all hell breaks loose then. You know, the, October has five Mondays. Oh. And another thing, I guess, about the after the election, we'll have a new board of so the They don't have, well, they don't take effect until February 1st. Oh, no, they don't. Okay. Are you suggesting a week from today? Two weeks from today, mm -hmm. I think, is what she's suggesting. Two weeks from today is Halloween. I know, that's the only problem. Oh, handing out candy. Maybe it's. It doesn't have to be a Monday. It doesn't have to be. Okay. Yeah. So, could we add that to the agenda somewhere for selecting a different date, or are we just going to do it now? Hold on. Want to do the first? First, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's do six. Yeah. Does that work for everybody? I don't usually come yeah. to the PCA okay. meetings. So. Do you want to do the other first for Tuesday? Which is a Tuesday. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary. You were talking about maybe moving that whole select board. Not necessarily. If you want to use the back room, be fine. We were we had discussed sure. literally moving it into the next room. That's what they said on I thought she was talking about recycling the select board. What time? Seven. Thanks for me. Okay, what else do you have, Rosemary? Okay, current taxes to date were collected at 41.42%, just slightly better than the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. Taxes will be doing again in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a list of delinquent taxes. Yeah. This is what would go to the tax collector. We are going to send it to the in December. Anybody that's over a thousand dollars. That's this entire list. Yes. Is this list longer than normal? Well, it's got a lot of little ones on it. Yeah. So it's anything that's over a thousand dollars. Unless you guys want to change that, that will anything else. Yeah. Over a thousand per parcel or actual device and inexpensive mobile homes. Well, I think you also did an analysis at one point of what it costs cost. us to do it versus mm -hmm. what we get out of it. Mm -hmm. That thousand is probably still a good question. Yep. Yeah. Um, what were you asking, Evan? I was asking if it was over a thousand per parcel or a thousand in aggregate to a person because there is. Some people here that are listed multiple times. That it depends if it's got land or part. if it's just a mobile home. If it's just a mobile home. If it's not a thousand dollars, we won't send it. But your point is there might be a single person who in the aggregate might pull over a thousand dollars. Well, Mm -hmm. You need the action on this? Nope. Not till December, sounds like. Okay, cool. Um, what else, Rosemary? I think that's all that I had. Um, sorry to interject, Rosemary, but I don't think we <laughs> solved your question about the meeting here on the 7th. I think they, Beth said it was okay to go in the back room. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed that. It's okay. But yeah, we can go in the background. That's totally fine. <laughs> okay. Well, we still have Rosemary in her report. Um, are you guys going to come back to us with recommendations, revised recommendations on how to deal with the. Yes. Yeah. And when, when Walter was here, 
and raise some issues which he has raised multiple times in the past. Mm -hmm. My own opinion on that is that we should be prepared, possibly with a legal opinion um, on that. I mean, I think what we're doing is needs to not only the straight face test, but the statutory requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but I have every expectation Walter's going to stand at the town meeting here and call us out. Yep. So uh, we need to be prepared for that one way or another. I agree. So last we met, Rosemary was going to follow up and Brian was going to follow up. They each were going to as action items to follow up. Yep. I agree. We still need to do that. Didn't we already get legal opinion on that? I or thought you did one year, a couple of we did a couple of years ago. Walt just brought this up numerous times, and we were our attorney thought it was well within our authority, and we still bring it and put it in the budget that's presented to this voters and the voters. Because all you're doing is just proposing. Yeah, you're not right. Committed it to, to go right. in those certain spots. Yes, I mean, for 26 <laughs> years, every single seminar and workshop I went to, the the legal opinions from CPAs, the lawyers, were that the select board had the legal authority, not only authority, but responsibility mm -hmm. to deal with surpluses. His question is a bit specific. It's whether or not you can put any money into a reserve fund without specific voter approval. Yeah. Well, the other question that he asked was about a specific article that was voted on. From a specific year, I can't remember the year, but the thing I had asked Brian, I think during the meeting, but perhaps after, I think during the, was to look up all the articles around budget that have been voted on and whether or not it specifies for that current year. Because I think that's a point of clarification we need to get. And we may need to get legal opinion on it, but I think we need to do a little homework first. The question, I, I, I know only know this because of Walter's past. Comments about this a specific article he was talking about is the article that created the reserve fund to begin with. I see. And that specifies in the case of the highway, it's I believe it refers to a line item in the budget. Yep. And his argument is we cannot put money, surplus money, into the reserve fund. The only way it can go in is through an item in the you know, line item in the budget. I don't agree with them on that. I think the select board has the legal obligation and responsibility to deal with surpluses. And that as long as the voters approve our our proposed designation of reservation, I think it's fine. But he's pretty adamant that the only way it can get in is through a line item in the budget. Yeah, I just don't think we hire that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I think we still need two parties to do homework. So Rosemary, you'll pull up on your end, the reserve and reserve fund side. If there is any clarification between you two, please talk to each other about what you find in advance so that you're on the same page before we talk about it again. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll make a report that includes legal opinion and any thing new that we've got to share. Legal opinion, anything new, and the article is voted on in the past with the context in which it is established. Yeah. Yep. Aren't those all listed in that capital equipment plan? Uh, our yes. capital plan has, I think if we discovered that it was missing one, but it, historical society. And yeah, historical That's society is more recent. So I don't think that one's in there in the skate park. Not sure if the last time we updated it was before or after the skate park, but yeah. Uh, okay, so you follow up. Yes. Um, will you add it, put a note to add that to our agenda list? Yep. Uh, okay. What else you got, Rosemary? That's it. Do you have anything else for Rosemary, Duncan? Uh, nope. Anything else? <clears throat> okay, review plan purchases. We have no planned purchases of over a thousand dollars coming up before our next meeting. Okay. Uh, this might be a decent time to address that the indeed came in higher than estimated. Uh, 
the estimated cost for it was under a thousand. Uh, and once the it ran for a couple of weeks, and once those were totaled up, it totaled up to a little bit more than a thousand. And that's the one I have Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Have you put a stop to that? I have. Just still going. Okay. Yep. Um, committees and volunteer, racial justice and social equity committee resolutions. Uh, all right. I also got a comment from uh, a text message from someone watching at home that they're having a little trouble hearing us. So I'll do my best to speak up. <coughs> um, so the uh, we just had another resignation from the racial justice and so social equity committee. Uh, that was Adele McDowell, who was the uh, the high school student who had been interested in the committee and, and serving on the committee for uh, a little while. Motion okay. we accept the resignation from Adele. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mark, I just have it. Aren't we sending a card or a thank you email? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, is, is nope. there any um, recommendation from the committee to replace that seat as of yet? Or has it been posted? Or? Uh, it had been, we had had a vacancy. Uh, that was posted. And actually just in the last couple of days, we've had two people express interest in serving. Uh, that wasn't warned for tonight, so I wasn't really thinking we were gonna take it up tonight, but uh, we do have now two people who've expressed interest in serving and we've had two recent resignations. So, so that the two people could serve our... Yep. Yeah. Um... So what's the board's pleasure? Would we like to talk about this too, or would we like to table? I'd say that it should be circulated on the front porch forum on the town's Facebook page and we take it up at the next meeting. That way, if anybody's looking, they have one more chance. Okay. Works for everybody? Okay. Works for me. Excellent. Okay. Um, so you'll add that to the agenda. Yep. Um, all right, uh, next up, I've got the library maintenance report and the possible update for the MOU. Um, so getting into the maintenance report, uh, both uh, uh, Mark Woodward, um, Jean Engel and Jasmine and I uh, went and toured the building and kind of ins inspected some of the uh, some of the known problem areas, some of the, the things that we and they were concerned about and maybe had some issues with in the, the past that were serving us well now. Um, buildings generally in good condition continues to need uh, regular maintenance and a few updates. There are some current problem areas and we've got some suggestions and timelines of, along which we, we intend to uh, be tackling and attempting to fix these on, on it's on packet page seven has the uh, kind of timeline and, and what we're going to be working on um that pretty well covers the maintenance assessment uh you're all set jasmine with that part okay yeah. great um So are we okay with the, uh, is the board ready to accept the, the maintenance plan and report? Is this something that, like, what is the funding? Like, what are you thinking about funding around all of this? Is this some- So that's the second half of this document. The first half is different findings. Yep. Okay. Would you like me to talk about that or? Sure. Come on. <laughs> So the second half is on page nine. Jasmine, just one request, sorry. Yeah. Is the mic set up? Uh, the mic should be working. I'm not sure how well it's gonna. Mark, are you able to hear Jasmine? Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the financial breakdown um, is basically business as usual, take us taking care of the library trustee, taking care of the things that 
areas that we assessed and noted. Um, the one thing that we are seeking financial help with is the replacement of the basement windows. But we would request all of the bids, we would find the contractor, we would manage the operations, but we would just, um, we're requesting some and this kind of all ties back to flood mitigation and FEMA reports and um, having come to the library and like, give us a plan. So it's an important task, but it's also an expensive one. So you don't have any numbers yet. This this is just something. No, so if you look at the proposed timeline date, we have not yet requested RFPs. Um, we will start doing that in 2023 with the hopes to actually do the work in the fiscal year. This current year, I think $7,500, and then we could budget some for the next year. So depending on where the work fell, we could use some of this year's funds. This happened with the ramp a couple of years ago that it, the way the work fell, it spanned to budget years. Um, so we could use some of the, the capital improvement funds for this year's budget. Okay, um, have you looked into, I'm curious, and I don't really know what's out there, but I'm sure you can imagine what I'm going to ask. Have you looked into grant funding of historic buildings or energy efficient projects, that kind of thing? Um, no, we haven't. Okay. Particularly with the installation of the attic? With yeah. Anything, really, including the windows, right? <laughs> Tasha might have some information for us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and I think Efficiency Vermont has money out there for window upgrades and stuff. We did try to go that route with Efficiency Vermont, and um, it was rather tough to find the Just chomping at the bit. Oh, I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the legislature passed Act 172 um, last year. They were worried that they might not proceed because there was a problem with the heart money and they switched it out. But anyway, this is a program that provides uh, funding for municipalities to do energy assessments of all of their buildings and then provides funding for those energy improvements. So mm -hmm. it's really an incredible opportunity for something like this if you're looking at, at energy. Um, and we'll be sending out information as soon as we finalize um, our agreement with building. And then I wasn't sure if you had also looked at the community facilities grant for buildings and general services, but that is capital funding for community structures and okay. I can send along the link to that grant program as well. So yeah, so there's like some money. Yeah. So um, I'm going to be happy. I, I would like to chime in. I think that it, um, the library having such regular hours ought to have a Nest thermostat that just turns on an hour before the library. Because I noticed last week that you're burning 4,500 gallons of fuel oil a year there, which could be a real, you might be able to save money. I don't know how much you turn it down every day or when you come back in, but I think that might be a smart, smart thing to do. And efficiency Vermont will help with that. So I don't know if you caught the first word. You said Nest, but I would just say that Nest is like a Wi-Fi thermostat. 
Um, and those are available, you can purchase through Efficiency Vermont. I happen to be on the website today okay. looking for myself. Um, but really, you could get any programmable Program. thermostat. It doesn't even have to be yeah. a Wi Fi enabled um, that you could just schedule to go on and off at specific temperatures or different times of day. Uh, we should do that with all of our buildings, every one of yes. them. Um, Especially the tower garage that's burning 27,000 gallons of fuel oil a year. I think that one was wrong. 73 <laughs> gallons a day. That sounds like a lot. I hope that you think it was uh, right. Were all of those numbers accurate? Those were the numbers in the report that was generated. The If something may have getting transcribed from a written invoice into our system, some, there may have been a typo or something wrong. It sounds like a unit of measure problem. So my guess is gallons were entered for units yeah. when it was dollars. Maybe, I don't know. It could be a unit of measure. No. no. We shouldn't get stuck on that right now. Yeah. Because right. Mean, That's another conversation. So let's yeah. not get stuck on that. But um, So it sounds like grant opportunities would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, my big thing timeline-wise would be getting budgets next year or the 2023 2024 fiscal year would be difficult i mean we could use our building reserves but we're, the budget's already built for 2023 2024 before you're even getting numbers for the town to know what chunk of the fire we're assisting it you know mm -hmm. library could come back with a hundred thousand dollars and that's a different conversation than five so ultimately what you're saying is that we're going to be building out our 23-24 budget beginning in November and we need it finalized early <clears throat> January so that when we go to put, publish in the town report everything's there and we have our articles written for town meeting day. So let's kind of honest quickly. And those windows, uh, which is kind of in our <clears throat> category, uh, at least for funding aspect of it, I remember in the past that it was an issue with at least some of those windows with uh, flood, flood water um, issues. And I'm wondering if that might be something that we should consider for our emergency fund, um, if, it, if it's going to mitigate a flood disaster at the library. Um, did you guys ever come up with a solution to the basement door, a flood flood water solution? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Brian built a little or chiseled a channel that leads to the second. So we haven't had a big flood that we did the day after Halloween. So we haven't had that much water. Seems to work. Was a flood door installed? We have a flood, we have a door with um, bars. We added another bar and then we got these things called, uh, no, that's a pig. Pigs? These are called pigs and they're, you blow them up and they act as a barrier around the channel. So the door never got reinstalled, but with the added bar, we did. So, and I believe with the door, um, there was some concern by one of the engineers that looked at it about heavy stuff, but um, we made it so that water could, that it could actually go under the building and buckle the whole foundation. Yeah, so that was sorry stuff putting in such a strong door into that old building. But you had engineers you did advising you weren't figuring it out. Yeah. Um, I think Jessica, where you're gonna go with budget is that you don't ever have firm numbers going into a budget season. No one does. That's totally fair, but I think having a general understanding of what you think the cost could be is as close as budgeting gets. Yeah. Closer to budget in three months. Yeah. Typically. And then go back up to but even if we don't have a 
final agreed price if we've got an idea that's much better than where, where we are today where we don't even really have a ballpark for you okay um so what is the okay let's go thank you for having the building inspected and writing a report on the findings by the way like kudos I want us doing that. And, and I've already been brought in Brian's ear quite a bit about this, um, but I really do appreciate it. Just being um, what does the board think? What are your thoughts? Good report. It's a good report. Without knowing what the town is on the hook for, it's uh, hard for me to fully support it. It just says finance the replacement of basement windows. Big question mark there for me. But it's a good report. Concerned financially, very specifically financially. Yes, financially. They got known to sign the town up for. Would you be comfortable with a motion to accept the report with the caveat that we a full full estimate or an accurate estimate is brought back to the board for final approval? For final approval or more discussion? For, for approval. Yeah. It works for me. I mean, it I was brought back the number for final approval. Yeah. The, my, yeah, my hesitation is the same. It's actually just not knowing what the numbers are. Like, I have a hard time just the town signing off on, yeah, we're going to help you do this in the 2023 20, 24 budget, personally. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. And the grant funding, I think, is going to be a really big factor in all of this. So, hopefully, some of that comes through. Um, but I'm, I'm generally supportive of this in principle, and I do really appreciate the report. I'm also supportive of it, and I really encourage looking at grant funding. I think it's going to be out there for this kind of stuff. As long as it comes back to us for you know, final approval in the budgetary, budgetary approval process. Mm -hmm. I would make the motion that we accept it contingent on a final review and approval in, in the context of this budget. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Who's opposed? No, ayes have it. Okay, thank you. Um, it looks like this is listing Brian to sign. Sorry, I should have mentioned this before. And Mark as the library liaison. Um, so if you two wouldn't mind, and I'll sign the um, plan with the caveat listed sure. version. Mine's pretty dirty. Yeah, I, I've got the electronic copy still. I'll add a little comment in there that. It's pending final approval of actual numbers and, and discussion. I would yeah, say specifically the budget is pending. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sure. The other part on uh, this maintenance report and this regular work is part of the MOU that we agreed to with the library. And uh, library trustees have talked about possibly making a couple changes and a couple updates to that report to make it a little bit easier to administer for both us and the library trustees. Um, you know, some specifics you want to? Yeah, so right now the MOU as it stands, we have an annual walkthrough, an annual assessment. Um, basically, I'm like between our walkthrough and now. So here we are, and we're in the 
up to our next assessment. Whereas if we look at our previous timeline, it goes up to four. I think that we're thinking every three years would be sufficient. The building is old, but it's not going to change drastically over, you know, and if it does, I deal with it. <laughs> um, but I just think that it's more realistic for the time during the more remaining to start our and to write this out. Um, but you were saying, Brian, if we, if we rewrote the MOU and brought it back in the spring when we were supposed to do the walkthrough, then you all could approve that at that time. That was my thinking is just we've already got an MOU in place, just ride this one out. And then when we go to renew it, instead of renewing the current one, we can renew an updated proposal that extends some of the timeline out. Beth and I had talked a couple of times about getting more, doing more building maintenance inspections, really trying to work on some additional planning and everything for all town owned buildings, um, which makes a less frequent timeline of re-inspecting the same building uh, a little more helpful if we're kind of working through a rotation rather than trying to do every single building every time. Uh, so, yeah. It seems I, like it makes sense to all of us. I think a three year is the right time frame to um, just, you know, for what it's worth, and I know you already know this, but don't need to say it, is that it will be a different board come spring. Um, so no promises on anything for the award, but um, I still think it makes sense. In the, in the MOU process, it would also be, you know, to your point, it would be really useful to have an assessment in time for our budget discussions. Mm -hmm. So we've got some idea of what our potential budget impacts might be. This timing is actually perfect. Seeing this right now, if we had a little number to it, like a, numbers, yeah. roughly a number to yeah. it, this would be perfect timing because we're not inundated with thinking about everybody's numbers all at once. Mm -hmm. um, Are the terms all of them two years? No, no. our select board terms are two and three year terms. Okay. Three, two, and one. And one was one. No, there's three threes and two twos. Oh, there are. Yeah. There's no one year term. Does three years seem reasonable? I thought I was a one year term. Three years. That's right. <laughs> it would essentially um, have to be an automatic renewing with an option to opt out from either party at any time. Um, but three years is fine. From my perspective, I can't speak for this board or next year's board. Mm -hmm. I think it makes logical sense when, it when you're talking about building inspection. I mean, five years even could be okay, but I will. Three years. a lot can change in three years. It can, but between now and then, we're not going to uh, assess a building every year, regardless First, of the board. If something did come up, we could address that. Then it would be But yeah, so we can work on that with a time or with an eye of having it when the current MOU is up. Yep. But you know, really want to take the board's temperature on there on making those changes. So great, we'll do that. Well, all right. Uh, next up, uh, we have review prior review board priorities. So uh, there was a discussion that we wanted to kind of run through these again. Talk about how well we're meeting them. Do we want to make changes? Uh, this is on packet page eleven. Uh, uh, yep, so this is our priority list from the last time we spoke where, where we, last time we got together, aside from ARPA, so not ARPA, um, when we got together, although it does include ARPA funds, figuring out, but um, this is the ranking that we ended up with. So basically, if we look at our top three items, they are in order, light industrial park, ATV ordinance and economic development and branding marketing are the three top categories. Um, and then followed by decarbonization, ARPA fund usage, NVU, um, and we'll just stop there. 
like the public service award ceremony. I didn't do that. It's <laughs> number seven. So, um, okay. So light industrial park. Let's just talk about what we. This is our highest top of the list. Um, I know we've talked about it in relation to ARPA funds also. ARPA funds, we know we have a deadline on, by the way. So I just want to call out the fact that it's not first, but it, like, we can't let it, it can't be stagnant. Um, what do we need to do at this point to keep Light Industrial Park as our top item and keep it moving forward? I just think the, uh, the ARPA funds, the economic development position, the Light Industrial Park, they sort of all work together, tied together. Sure, yeah. Yep. I would say one very specific thing that we should do if we're going to move this thing off the dime at all is review where we are with, I mean, you know, the plan that was done on that is now what? It was 2013 or so. And that original plan that was done, we never actually got. At an Act 250 permit, we got letters from the participants who might have some opinions on specific aspects of it. Those all could have changed. So I, I think we need to do an update on in in the class or obviously way up to date. Mm -hmm. So if we're really gonna, if we're really serious about trying to do something, I think we need to update. Some of the basic information that we've got. Uh, yeah, we know that some of the areas of the, the old of, of the current plan are not going to serve anymore. That stormwater regulations have changed quite a bit. Uh, our previous applications have included a final engineering component where we would update the plan, um, but we could separate that from construction uh, for. Uh, a current engineering study. Okay, next question is, do we need our economic development coordinator to be here before we kick these things off? We need the effort. We need somebody to try to Yeah, I'm going to go that. Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily think that we have to wait for that. Economic development employee, part time or full time, to start moving that along. Even if it's just information gathered, it's it's all farther ahead. So, who do you think is doing that? Oh, you? Nope. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, currently, it's in Brian's job description. It is, that, and I'm we've sure. given Brian some priorities. Yeah. <clears throat> and this would take time. It will. A lot. Yeah. yeah, that's going to that's, that's why it's, I think that's why it's number one on the list. I also think it's why it hasn't moved. <laughs> we could propose um, to the voters to sell it. That's another option. We're going to do one of it. Yeah, we got to do something. So yeah. let me just ask what is the smallest lift with the most value? On the that I think we could do for the industrial park. What is the smallest lift that would give us the most value? I think that updating the engineering study would provide a significant lift and make us more competitive. Not a significant lift, a late lift, big value. I think it would provide big value. I understand it's not a light lift. <laughs> it's going to keep asking, like. What is a small effort that will give us big value? A light lift that will give us big value. We could potentially approach a couple developers and see if there's interest if the town were to get an Act 250 permit or something. It's just a couple phone calls and knows pretty quick for them to say. Yep. Um, there's this testing that happens in the software world. And it's essentially you put something out there. Doesn't mean you can deliver it. Just means you put it out there to see what the demand is for what you throw out there. Um, and if your demand is high, 
it means it's probably worth investing more of your time into it. And if the there's little to no response, don't bother. And I like the idea of seeing if there's appetite out there um, with a light lift. So the question is, if we were to do something like that, how would we, are you talking about just cold calling people? I don't know if there's sites out there for something like that, or if it's just a cold call or. There's more memorial economic development corporation. We should absolutely be. We could that. certainly involve LEDs. <clears throat> so, tomorrow morning, I have a meeting with Pat Ripley about the light industrial park, um, and how it fits into their their planning. That they're writing some new planning documents, and we're going to talk about how this can fit in on that. I can while I'm talking to Pat, uh, I can ask about setting up some meetings with a couple of the developers. It's been a few years since I've, you know, it's at least been pre COVID since I've had any of those meetings. Um, and a lot has changed since then. So what do you mean setting up meetings with developers? Uh, John Mandeville had assisted uh, a few times with providing introductions and setting up meetings where I would go to um, White and Burke, I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's White and Burke and, and one or two other developers to pitch to them of do they want to assist us with the project. But that's not the ask. Like, okay. We did shortest job first. That's the name for what I'm asking everybody. And the point in asking it is that you're really putting no effort in. You're not creating a pitch. We're not pitching something. We're saying, this is available. Are you interested? Literally, this is available, not it's going to be, it could be, well, no soft language. This is available, are you interested? Somebody says, yes, I'm interested. Like, yes, the answer is yes. That's your demand. How much demand is out there for an industrial park? That's all. We're not pitching to anybody. We're not trying to sell anything. We're just saying, do you want this? Can we do that? Are people going to respond? Are they not going to like not having a pitch? I don't know. I don't know the customer. We need to fully know the customer. If I was a developer, I'd want to have some assurance that we're going to be able to get permits. But you're, you're saying it's available. The lot land is available, but is an industrial park available? Well, I'm actually not saying it's available. I'm saying I want to know that you are interested <laughs> in something that's available. But then we respond with, sorry, it's not available right now. We're just, we're measuring demand. Way back in the beginning, we did approach a couple of developers and they had no interest. But that's not to say you know, 15 years ago is the same as today. There might be a developer that would see the value in developing the site for us. And, they would take the lead on it. That would take a lot off our plate. Okay. Do we have we secured water and sewer for that site? The village has done infrastructure improvements with it in mind that this might happen. And they have capacity, Eric. I'd hate to. Yes. And Rosemary's shaking her head. Yeah. And the majority of the land is actually within the village limits, Mark. Nice. So they have capacity. They're not running out of capacity. Correct. It has some really nice infrastructure features that are very accessible. Uh, they got three phase power, they got the water, municipal water, and sewer. Uh, you know, those are the biggies are well, as far as also uh, transportation with group 15. Right. There's, I assume, I shouldn't assume, there's high speed access there. Oh, yeah. just like here. <laughs> All Comcast. Right, it's pathetic. Hopefully there's fiber that goes right. Is right. the cool yeah. fiber? Yeah. Is there, yeah. okay, there's a difference between fiber running through and fiber that they can tap into. Is that's not that's not clear. There's fiber at the co-op. Is it usable for anybody else? I don't know. 
I, I would not expect that, I don't think there's any utilities other than the three phase power in or on the site right now because it's not developed. That was the big message we got from people we spoke to before was, you know, that they wanted us to complete the infrastructure upgrades to provide not just water, sewer, uh, high speed and everything to the Route 15, but they wanted it into the site. That's that's kind of what I'm saying. Is I think there's a big difference between. It would be great if if the, if a, there was a developer who said, "Geez, that's a that's a wonderful opportunity. I'd like to take it and run." I have a sneaking feeling that's not going to happen. Um, it would be great if it did, and and it's certainly worth asking the question. Let's ask. Let's ask. Okay. Um, and also, what what would the lift be for Act Two Fifty? I assume it's big, but I don't know. That would be pretty big, and we would want to engage with a uh, an engineering firm as part of an updated engineering plan to yeah. do the Act Two Fifty for us. That Act Two Fifty for a job like that, I do not believe we could do in house. No. Okay. But okay. we could certainly solicit RFPs from engineering firms to do the do a plan ready to submit to that. Yep. Which is basically what we did with Eugene Engineering. You know, that they brought us to a point where we're ready to submit. Okay, that sounds like a light lift too, because you're talking about reusing an existing RFP. Yeah. Like yeah. And and the majority of the work would be being done by the engineering firm, not us in house. Okay. Do you agree that repurposing an RFP is a late lift? I, I'm not sure where we have that RFP, but I think I could find it. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think that that's a big lift. I don't know if I say light, but Finding not big. RFP a big lift. <laughs> I, I mean, what I mean is I'll have to find it and see what it says and what it exactly what it's describing. You know, we have. I'm still asking you. It's finding yeah. the RFP a heavy lift. Finding the RFP is not a heavy lift. Okay. And we have a yeah. We, it, the RFP would be a little different anyway because we already have. I think what it would, I think the RFP would be to have an engineering, an engineering firm review. The, you know, the existing engineering update. Yes. Right. Understood. Yeah. So I, I, that's what I'm getting at. I don't know how useful the original, the original RFP is now uh, for what we're asking for now. So I don't know that it really, but a new RFP for an update on an engineering plan is still not a heavy lift. But Gugiano probably still has the report. It may be. Uh, that work yet uh, just asking them what it would cost to do a dust off and update. Do you have your hand up, Greg? Or is uh, it just sitting on top of your head? I, can't <laughs> I think when I'm I think to me first thing you need to do is figure out what you want to do with it. Are you trying to sell it or are you gonna Put the infrastructure in and then parcel it out, you know, permits. Um, I'm just listening and I'm hearing a bunch of different directions here, I think. And, you know, usually when you're going to develop a property, you, you start with your permits because you can't build anything without a permit. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And then you kind of got to decide well, do I want to bring the uh, Utilities to the curb, right? Or do I want to bring the utilities, put put the first part of the road in, say a couple hundred feet so people can drive in there and see what you have? You know, when you go by there now, it's hard to tell where it even is, right? So yeah. that's not going to be appealing to a developer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, you got to look at your Arpa funding and see where you're going to go with this. But I could see an Act 250 permit down there with a 
all the different fees you have to pay, it's probably going to be pretty close to a hundred grand. I, would, I mean, just guessing off the top of my head, I would, I would say you're going to be somewhere there. And then um, you could take the existing plans and go out to contractors and say, hey, would you mind throwing a number out? A budget for us. We do that all the time for people and other people that just where you just take what you have, say, hey, what what's this gonna cost nowadays? And you know, they'll run it through their computer program and go and go and we'll have a price for it. So then you can say, hey, is this is worth it or it's not worth it, right? If you end up paying so much to get the permit and getting the work done to a certain point and the locks aren't worth what you put into it. No, those are fiscal things you need to do where it's kind of time money, I would think. So, I mean, to me, a light lift would be to take the prints you have and send them out to RC or do two or three day from the other contractors and say, hey, could you update the numbers from this one? That's if you, you have prints, right? Yes. I, yeah. I, I think so going back to Duncan's point, it's we also know that our current plans aren't, we wouldn't be permitted today. Right. You know, that, that at the very least, the storm water, it, it wouldn't be permitted today. So I don't know. We've got some updated numbers on them, but I don't know how. Well, your permits now are, people aren't using storm water pumps. They're using infiltration gallons, which is a lot more expensive than just the pump. I imagine your friends probably have storm water pumps. So, yeah, you're going to be substantially higher costs. But, you know. But the contractor is going to know that, right? To your point about the light lift, like they may not know all the specs of the system you're talking about, but they would know that your costs are increased greatly by not having a pond. Well, you know, one way to look at it is bringing. Your utilities to the curb or up 200 feet or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe a, a developer would take the rest of it, so you wouldn't need to worry about the storm water. You want to let them do it. But I think you got to figure out man, somehow figure out how much you're going to get out of those locks. And it's just, are you throwing money in, in a hole or are you going to? I mean, I don't presume the town needs to make money. Just trying to create business and things and jobs and things. So, you know, uh, some night you need to do some of this study. But yeah, you send those out to three or four different contractors, have them price it the way it is, at least you'll have a base. Right, that we can split they, out. That happens a lot. They, they come to us instead of having an engineer do it and pay them, mm -hmm. they'll bring it to us and give us the price. <coughs> <laughs> The price what is there, you have to change the prints and you just price it in there to give you a base, you can find a starting point. I think probably for me, that's what I'm supposed to do that for the top of your place to start. And that was done um, with the engineering. Um, there was a contractor's estimate, and that's how it was derived. Ruggiano Engineering got. You know, some contractors to throw some numbers at it. Yeah. But again, I think part of it, uh, I fully appreciate and understand what you're saying. And it may be that we end up phasing it, you know, that we build the first 200 feet or, or whatever. But I think until we get, but my own opinion is it would be worth it to get at least a cost estimate from Ruggiano. On what it, what it would take to update those plans, because I think anybody that wants to buy it is going to want to know what the impact of dealing with stormwater management is going to be, and and to know that you know another big issue with that plan was, believe it or not, um, mitigation of uh, ag and forest soils. Up there in the plan that we had come up with that had semi buy in from forests and parks and ag was setting aside 
the Prindle law um, and or the Brahma law or portions of those lands as um, mitigation, you know, mm -hmm. mitigated lands. I, I don't know if that would still fly or not. You know, probably a couple phone calls would answer that in an updated engineering plan might answer that as well. But, in order to keep this moving, I think we need to have small lifts. And we need to pick one or two small lifts. Because if we don't, if we do talk about everything in aggregate, we're not going to keep it moving. It's just the reality is things are going to get life happens. And I would really like to keep small things moving until we get this economic development person in place. And then we can get bigger things moving. Um, personally. And if one of the small things is asking the, for a quote on what it would cost to upgrade the plant, update the plant, totally cool with that. Um, and if another small thing is sending the plans we have out to a few contractors, let's do it. Both white lifts, both give us valuable information back. I would make a motion to the effect that we, uh, that we get an estimate from Luciano Engineering as to what it would take to update the plan and that we send the existing plans out uh, to some selected contractors. Maybe Greg's got an idea. Maybe you'd like to be on that list, Greg. Right? Well, there's a list of- Wait, before you respond, wait, before you respond. Sorry. Are you gonna change what he's gonna say for his motion? That is not my business. Okay, second, <laughs> wait a second. Now discussion, go ahead, Greg. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we don't have a log on our big board right now, so I think uh, once things settle down in about another month, we probably could do that for you. But you want other people to do it. You want to pick up a nurse and you're, uh, you know, I, I kind of like to see it stay local, but the other thing could be known, but we can suggest some folks to That'll get you some ideas on where you at it. The other thing you could do is say, if I put in a 200 foot row, do I need an IP? You might be able to do some of it without an IP. That let whoever deal with it. But right now, it's not a deal. And the other thing you got to think about right now is this economic downturn that we're running into with higher interest rates. It's going to be hard to sell. You know, they're going to raise the interest rate to three quarters of the point, probably two more times this year. That's going to hurt your commercial rates up to seven or eight percent. Uh, I'm not Alan Greenspan, but I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything we can do to help, of course, you do. Okay, thanks, Greg. Speaking of that, the town revolving loan fund is another good portion of it. Conversation. Yeah. Positive. Yep. Yeah, we have a town revolving loan fund for everybody in um, reading minutes land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so please reach out. Okay, now that we've plugged our revolving loan fund, do you have anything you want to add, Evan? I think the industrial park kind of dragged the conversation out. We could get back to the priority list. It's a priority list. Okay, priority number one. But okay, we have a motion on the floor. So, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, cool. Good. Next up is ATV ordinance. We're going to get back to it. Yeah. So, How okay. Keep this one moving forward with little lips. Yeah, right? Good question. We need volunteers for this one. What do you what do you see as the impediment to moving forward on this bill? I think the one constant that we hear about everywhere is law enforcement. Or any enforcement. <laughs> enforcement. Yeah. To me, that's the big the biggie. Uh, I also think that road use, I think our board is not of the same mind. Any one of us and ask an opinion. 
and they'll get a slightly different answer. Uh, <clears throat> maybe a drastically different answer depending on who you ask. So I think those are the two sticking points. The only reason to have an ordinance would be for road use. Well, the reason that or on town property or anything that differs from state statute. If it's in our right of way, because if it's from state statute on private property, the town has no purview over it. Sure. I think we got to dust that off again. Mm -hmm. The one that's in effect is in effect. Yep, that's true. It gives a certain amount of access to certain places. It is. My understanding is the state of Vermont gave ATV's passage on Route 15 right here. So you could technically right now trailer your ATV down and drive from yes. the Union Bank to Maple Fields and back. <laughs> the town never gave residents on one side of the town a way to connect to the residents on the other side of town. I think that's an important one. Like I said, we're going to have different opinions. So, do we want to have a, another dedicated meeting? Do we want to incorporate it into every fourth meeting, every second meeting? It's number two priority behind the play industrial park. Or do we want to let it lie? I'm for letting it lie. Yeah, there's one. Well, Beth, we have not succeeded at all with any kind of enforcement. You know, and that's that's a big deal. Um, if we have no enforcement, who cares whether we have an ordinance? They go, I've watched them drive down Main Street multiple times lately. So we just covered uh, is allowed by the state. It's just how did they get there? Is the question. Right, they came down Gould Hill. You know, but it's okay. Okay. I personally think we should have another dedicated meeting. Okay, vote for dedicated meeting, vote for letting it lie. Don't say during the year season. And <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, Doug and I tried to avoid this like the play. We knew what it was gonna be. Yeah. And and unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, when they caught up to look at it, the voters have forced the issue on us. Voice. So I, I think we got no choice, but we have to take it up and do something. I I I agree with that. I think we should have at least one dedicated meeting, and I would I would take it further, and I would suggest that we all do our own homework and be prepared to bring some specific ideas, so we don't just sit there and spin our wheels. Done a lot of homework, and I will tell you that I'm done my ATV homework. <laughs> I'm not doing any more homework. Uh, but fair enough. Okay, so dedicated. Okay, March so. 15. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> March 15th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe you'll have one more banger for your way out. Um, okay, so we'll set up a dedicated meeting for ATV ordinance. Are there suggestions on dates? Yeah. 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 Before That's March. March. <laughs> I, I, I think um, I will certainly try and be there. Throw throw some dates out and dates and times out. And see what happens. I can really liven up budget season. <laughs> yeah. All the dry meetings right there. Yeah. When do you want to meet? So we have that's our that's we, December. December? What? When were you shooting for? Oh, 
No, I'm not shooting. You tell me when you want to. Just said December. <laughs> I do month. not want to talk about this in December. I can tell you that for sure. When would you like to then? I'd like to do everything before Thanksgiving. Every single thing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So book every day. Uh, okay. We have tomorrow. Mark, what are your thoughts? I'll go with what the majority wants. I can't do tomorrow. You know, might as well go, might as well go in November. Um, so what about the week of the 14th? When does deer season start? Don't we ever don't we ever do like these Google things where you just send out three dates and the majority okay, of a survey. People. Yeah, okay, that's a good idea. I'll send out a survey. Mark, so yeah, fine. just send out a survey to the board and we'll just um, pick dates that work for us. Perfect. Yep. Uh, don't forget about our, our joint meeting in November, too. Oh, we might as well fill November right up. That was like a Friday or something. It was November 18th. The 18th. Yes, yeah, Friday. <clears throat> Google Calendar and play with three dates. Like hurting cats with this board. Let's just make um. Yeah, I'll send it. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll send it out. Okay, cool. And then economic development and branding and marketing. So we have the economic developer oh, position out there. We have an update on that as our next item. Yep. Okay. Um. So I think that to keep these front and center, we are going to have at least one of these topics in each of one of our two monthly meetings. I don't know that we can fit what? each of these in every meeting, but we will have that we'll have a one of these as a topic at least once a month. If not more of these as a topic at least once a month, one of those top three. Mm -hmm. Everything behind the top three, except ARPA, ARPA has to stay in front of us. Um, everything else we're gonna, they're not priorities, so we're not gonna talk about them. Okay. Um, in contract negotiations. Other than the things we have to do, That's right? Yeah. No, I, I will point out that economic development, decarbonization, and ARPA are tied okay. on our voting. Um, but regardless, they're still beyond number three. Yep. And the things that have a specific deadline we need to keep moving. Or, you know, there are things listed here that we need to keep moving. Right. Yep. That's why I want to burn less fuel oil in our buildings. Right. Understood. You're already on it. Perfect. Okay. What were you going to say? Uh, I'm also, I don't know exactly when we'll be able to wrap it in, but I'm going to provide some updates from the uh, conference I went to last week where I got some uh, really interesting information and suggestions about um, energy upgrades that we might be eligible for uh, at this building and the uh, town garage. So we've got some positive outlooks on those. Uh, I don't know exactly how we'll, how and when we'll fit them into an agenda, but I'll start with uh, you know just a little update about the conference, and then we can try and work it in. Uh, I think it's going to tie in our our building maintenance, decarbonization, and funding opportunities kind of together. Okay. All right. Uh, any more discussion on the board priorities? No. Nope. Okay. Moving on, I have a very brief update on the economic development. Uh, RFP and the projects that we have for that, I've put that out again. Um, I'll be making connections with uh, state planning, with Moyle County planning, getting, you know, kind of recirculating and trying to get as many eyes on it as we can. Um, uh, that's another little update from uh, my conference is uh, we had a panel session on uh, Rural economic development. I made a couple of contacts there, gave out cards. Uh, I'm hoping to follow that up with some conversations now that I'm home. Uh, 
So I have. Did you tell them we're looking for a coordinator? Yep. Okay. Uh, one of them is a part uh, part time teaching at Middlebury College, part time economic development consultant, mm -hmm. uh, and is very interested in talking to us about. Uh, this as a possible project, making use of some interns um, to bring them in. So it would be directed by somebody who has experience using some interns for support. Uh, there might be some real meat on that, that idea. Okay. So I'm going to continue to move it forward with conversations and trying to get people to see, uh, see our, our RFP. And you haven't seen additional um, resumes or RFP responses? No, not since our, our last meeting. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a possible positive development. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that I'm I'm very hopeful about that connection. Right? And we'll see how it goes. But that's gonna we're gonna want to shoot me, but. <laughs> but there is an item on our priority list that I think we should at least consider for moving up on the list. And that is as a result of our joint meeting with the trustees where there was discussion about clerk treasurer um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. position. So I'm just suggesting that we may want to move that up on our list a little bit higher than it was. And I, for one, would really like to use Rosemary's thoughts on how we might best accomplish such a transition mm -hmm. um, you know, timing wise um, personnel wise etc there's no better person to guide us in that discussion i didn't realize it was so fast when it said that voted i was not either that and i you know i think that's really up for i mean i, I think that i think that could be adjusted and certainly, but 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 it, it sort of begs the question of we should be prepared before we go to a meeting as to what the plan is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is part of the reason I'm suggesting we might want to yeah. bump that up on the list a little bit. Um, I think so too. And Rosemary, for what it's worth, because we can't actually ask you to do anything for us. <laughs> well, you know, with it. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe this is something to task Susan with. Because that way it's not all on you, first of all. But secondly, she's not in your position. And my guess is she has an idea of the things that she doesn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be a good place to start. You can come at it from two different angles. But anyway. But yeah. But yeah. You know, you know this, this could involve things like talking about having a finance position you know, associated with, especially on the village side, you know, on the village side, it's, it's pretty, uh, a lot, it's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Okay. I heard that Eden just lost their town clerk. I heard it was the assistant, not the town clerk. No, well, Candy, Candy is done. She was going to retire. Right. Don't get any ideas over there. <laughs> I think for context of keeping the meeting moving forward, we don't need to discuss these down there. Right. It's a good point. Do you agree that we're on the board? Kind of pumped I agree. Up a little bit. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Next up, we've got our discussion on the Holmes Meadow Grant uh, and Project Management Agreement with LCPC. So the stage that we're at right now, and Tasha, correct me if I'm off on anything, but I, as I understand it, the stage that we're at right now is we need to have a formal agreement to engage with LCPC so that they'll be able to uh, you know, get paid for their work on this. And uh, they'll they need to go out for uh, a, an assessor to get a fair price on the property itself. What are the cost breakdowns here? So then, nine thousand forty-one fifty maximum would be BLCT's portion, correct? LCPC. LCPC, sorry. 
Yeah. Long, long acronym. Yeah. The 78,000 per contractual. contractual. Uh, which that, page are you on? Uh, packet page 21. Okay. It's like the only breakdown. Is that for engineering? Are you talking about the breakdown of the total of the 189 yes. grants? Yeah. Uh, the breakdown um, in the budget is 6,000 for an appraisal, 102 um, for acquisition, 55 for final engineering, uh, 96 for construction bid process, and then the 9,000 for LCPC. And I also want to add that you're, on your agenda today should be um, that LCPC's project management contract, but also approval of the So before you keep going, could I just back you up a minute? Yes. 6,000 for appraisal, 102 for acquisition, 55 for engineering, six for what? The, uh, did you get the 11 for the permitting historic preservation review? Permitting for historic preservation, okay. Six for construction bid process, and the nine for LCPC. That should be in your packet. My packet is not. I've got page numbers in here. That's okay. Yep. It probably is, but it's so not. Just... There are some printed ones that have page numbers. It's right here. It's on the. Um, oh, it's not quite it's a little broken out. There, isn't it? Yeah, it's not broken out to that extent on page 21, which is. Right, right after out, attachments. Yeah, it's broken out in the award letter from the Law and Emergency Management uh, from March 14th of 2022. And I can give you the copy I have in the public. Okay, I don't think I have that one for this. That could be an oversight. That was the only question I had to answer my question. The other thing you're going to want to do is change on page 13 um, Town of Walcott to Town of Johnson. They didn't do that in the last round. We brought that up last time. Maybe that's why there's no town match. It could be. <laughs> 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 this is in your service agreement, Tasha. Page 13 of our package. Yeah. It's Obligations of LCP. LCPC staff will work with the town of Wolcott to provide services. Well, gee, you know, we do a lot of cutting and pasting for these. <laughs> so apologies on that front. We had mentioned that at the last approval. Yes, well, um, hopefully you're willing to um, approve the agreement with that editorial change. Um, yeah, so one for, yeah, one for the LCPC and one for the um, okay. I make a motion to enter into the agreement with LCPC authorizing the chair to follow. Second, 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 you have a second. Um, friendly amendment to make that editorial of correcting town of Johnson, yes, that's for the LCPC, not with. Yeah, the motion is for LCPC. I did the one, the first one. Okay. Um, okay. Any discussion? Um, Mike, did you want to speak? Yep. Um, second. Let's see if I can unmute you. Cannot. So hold on. Let me. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first off, it would have been nice to have had a real breakdown instead of uh, attachment B payment provisions on page 21. 
Uh, did I hear somebody say an appraisal was eight thousand dollars? Six. Six thousand for appraisal. That's ridiculous. You can get a piece of property appraised for five hundred bucks for crying out loud. Uh, this this looks like a real padded bill as far as I'm concerned. I tell you, if I was on the select board still, I never would enter into an agreement like this. Uh, I think there's too many unknowns here, and I think the town is actually getting overcharged. But one of the big problems is that this is so-called free money. And because it is so-called free money, people are willing to uh, spend it with impunity. Uh, for crying out loud, uh, to try to find out a fair market value for this piece of property, uh, number one, it's worthless. It's in a floodplain, and it's in uh, taxes, I believe, for about $79,600 which is really overpriced to start with. And had I been the owner of it, I would have grieved my taxes and brought it down to something more reasonable. But I mean, just alone, uh, the other cost, uh, what, how was that broken down? The $102,000. Uh, I could not hear that individual talking all that well. Uh, uh, what are the engineering costs? I mean, for crying out loud, uh, the town could buy this piece of property from the owner for, for what it's in for taxes, uh, get a stream alteration permit and cut out all that gravel on the side, stockpile it and run it through a crusher and put it on the roads. Uh, actually a whole lot cheaper than this. Uh, so are we saying this whole project is going to cost $189,871.50 or are there going to be other charges on top of it down the road? I'd be happy to speak to that. And for the record, this is Tasha Wallace from the Wall County Planning Commission. Um, we worked um, with the community um, to apply for this. I'm sorry, if, if Mike's having trouble hearing you. I can hear her now because she's, oh, speaking, she's okay. speaking up. Yeah. Okay, because I I, this is a mic, right? Yeah, okay. that's a mic. <laughs> Great. That's and let me know if you can't hear me. I'm happy to speak up or stand in front of the microphone. Um, however, these are all estimates in the award. The total award for this phase of this project, again, is $189,000. That doesn't mean that if it turns out that based on the appraisal, um, if the property turns out to be worth far less than 102, then the town will pay for that, the amount that is less than 102. In order to be able to make these awards for one emergency management is required to do these breakdowns um, as, as part of their process, the processes with the federal government. And so quite often they do just come up with the best estimates they can. I think the thing to focus on is all of these elements um, are going to be conducted um, with full transparency and every member of the public can have a full understanding of what these costs were when this phase is completed. But certainly everyone <coughs> has the intention of you know paying reasonable amounts for every part of this project. It's not a question of full transparency, it's a question of being overcharged. Uh, $6,000 for an appraisal is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, um, somebody's I, making some money here. I mean, I guess I'm done. Uh, thanks, so, Eric, yeah. Well, Tasha, maybe I, I was going to ask for some clarification. Uh, this is estimates. These are estimates, and, correct. And estimates not to ex exceed these numbers. So yes. if the number is less, then you're not, we're going to pay for what's less, right? Correct. If, this, if the cost of the appraisal comes in at $500 or $3,000 or $5,000, that's what will be paid. Okay. Yes. These are estimates and these are maximum numbers. Correct. Thank you. Sasha. Excuse me, Beth. I didn't see Eric raise his hand because he looks pretty small on the screen. I didn't try to interrupt anybody. <laughs> She was very offended. <laughs> um, Beth, can I just inquire as to, um, it must be before my time on the board that this Holmes Meadow got chosen for this kind of project. 
Um, can you, can somebody share with me how this meta particularly got chosen? I mean, we got a lot of other places that could be developed that are in the floodplain. Why did this suddenly, or maybe not suddenly, maybe it's been something that's per been percolating for a long time. Brian? Yeah, you know, I can provide a little bit of background on this. I, I don't know if I'd say it's been percolating for a long time, but it certainly has not, it, it is certainly not new and it does precede your, your time on the board. So um, mm -hmm. the state is making an effort to preserve some land for, uh, for flooding. Uh, and Johnson, having had a, a history of flooding, we were a good candidate for receiving some grant funds to purchase land for floodplain preservation. So it's land that we're going to, uh, that, that will be dedicated for, for flooding. That uh, the idea being that if we, we preserve it, we don't develop it, then other areas in town that could be impacted by flooding will have a, a lightened impact uh, and will hopefully not have, not have, uh, increased impacts in the future. Um, <clears throat> so we're a likely candidate for it. We worked with LCPC to select some property, and this was decided as a likely property, uh, in part because it it isn't developable right now. Um, so it should be something that we can acquire for relatively cheap. It is in the floodplain, and there's nothing mm -hmm. on it, so we don't have to do any demolition, deconstruction, uh, on the project. So it, it, it was a good candidate. Does that answer your question, Mark? Yes, it does. Thank you. The purpose, I, you said that it was proposed to preserve it. When LCPC, was it set had presented this, he had plans um, with projections. It wasn't a fully engineered plan, but if it were to be purchased, and three feet of gravel cut out of it, or five feet for an ice bypass. And I remember specifically asking that we went with the five feet, five foot option because it prepared better for floods. Yep. But none of this money includes that, does it? Uh, this it, not in this phase. The the first phase is to acquire <clears throat> the land. Is there any promise of that money? Um, it's my understanding that phase two will be awarded upon the completion of phase one. So yes, that is how the grant is structured. And all phases require no match, I assume. All phases require no match, right? Correct. And so it's pretty much straightforward that this problem, this is where the water is stored during, or some of the water is stored during the, the flood. I don't know if you've had a chance to see some of um, our work in Jeffersonville <clears> and how <throat> effective that has been in keeping water out of the community. But this property was identified also based on our modeling of the river and behavior. So it's not just that the property was identified, but the, the helpfulness of the property in reducing ice handling and reducing flooding. Uh, was confirmed through the modeling process. This is the Silver Jacket report. Is it the same well, report? Silver Jacket no. study. Oh, has, has there been any of these where phase one was completed, but the state ran out of money for phase two? So I don't believe so. And this is <clears> actually, <throat> um, this is all federal money that is being provided to the state specifically for this purpose. So we, I'm not aware of any situations where um, um, these projects have not been completed. I mean, it's always challenging working with you on projects like these, but these are structured to complete phase one and then to complete phase two. The only reason I ask is, if there was a history, I would be more reluctant to take a property off the tax base. If there wasn't a high likelihood of completion. So purpose. we have a um, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any other discussion or clarification? <clears throat> okay. Beth, Beth, I'd like to say one more thing, if I could, please. Yep. 
Uh, I know that what I'm going to say is 10 to 1 not going to make any difference, but I do feel very bad that uh, the taxpayers uh, in the United States are going to be paying upward of $190,000 for a $80,000 piece of property or less. And that's one of the big problems uh, with our country today and uh, dealing with the federal government. Uh, the whole system is broken. Okay, well, uh, when, we're not talking about the system. So I, 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 I understand. I understand. And I said that it probably wasn't going to make any difference. But I just wanted to, to say my piece. And I thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, and I'll just counter that by saying our federal government would pay a whole lot more when we have to replace houses for people who have significant property damage. Um, exactly. Yeah. OK, so are we going to do it? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, ayes have it. OK. Uh, the VEM contract is up. Is there a specific person to sign this one? Didn't we have Brian sign this one in June? I don't specifically remember. I, would... I think we did. I'm signing the other. We should just keep it consistent. Yeah. Okay. We should keep Thank it consistent you. if I'm signing the other. Uh, uh, like Tasha pointed out on packet page 18, you did have me sign this one before because I'm, ident I'm identified in the. Oh, yeah. Well, is that the okay. No. okay? Not identified in the LCPC grant agreement. So that one can go either way, but that's what's being signed by Linda White. Better unmute me. Please. Um, okay. Or mute so, me. Mike, I'm just gonna mute. Thank you. you. Okay. Um, I right, make a motion we enter into this agreement with the Mount Mercy Management, authorizing <clears throat> Brian to solve. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. Okay. Thanks, Tasha, for bearing with us. You're welcome to stay. It's been very interesting so far. <laughs> There's lots more good stuff coming. Okay, uh, update on the property and casualty insurance books. <clears throat> All right, uh, pretty brief update on uh, the property and casualty insurance options. Uh, I've been in contact with um, with, with Passive uh, and uh, Hickok and Boardman. Um, they're going to be getting us quotes from travelers and uh, another agency that I don't recall the name of off the top of my head, uh, but they are described as the two most competitive servicers for, uh, uh, for municipalities. Um, so I, I will have more information about specific quotes and a report on that, hopefully before our next meeting. Okay, full disclosure, the company I work for is owned by travelers, so I will not be part of discussion further. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I read that in the meeting minutes. I was on it last meeting. Um, why, what drove this discussion? I mean, I, I would be very, 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 very hesitant to not go with passive. Um, you know, it's a nonprofit. It's we own it. It's a membership owned. And why we wouldn't go with them? I would really just really question that. But I don't know what was behind the drawing. It was me. I was behind it. And basically saying when we have insurance, there's no reason we wouldn't get quotes. To understand what the options are out there in the market, not realizing that the company I work for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not going to cross their mind. And I had said that we owe due diligence to the lawyers. And I used specifically the mowing contract as an example. We spent months doing that. He said, was going to increase our property values by 11%. Well, 
eleven percent. Not saying that they're out to get towns, but we owe it to the taxpayers of this town to do our research. I mean, I'm sure we'll have this discussion <clears throat> after we get some numbers in here, but uh, with passive because they're nonprofit, they're owned by municipalities. I think every board, every uh, town in Vermont is part of a league, and I think oh, it's great. almost yeah. You know, okay, all the three are part of passive, so it's membership self-insured. If there's a year when they have collected more money than what they have to have a certain amount in reserve, but if they have too much brought in, then they will give money back. If you think you're going to get that from a private insurance company, except for during COVID, when there was some deaths. Um, I mean, that, I, I would just be really, really careful with that decision, and I would it should be, caution against it. It should be very easy for them to beat everybody else's price. Yep. Yeah. With the case we don't need to talk about. It. But I would also not think short term, but think long term. I don't think anybody was. Um, a couple of things that I've learned that I can share with you now, even though I, I don't have quotes yet. Um, when we're reading quotes and we're looking at these, we want to pay special attention to flood insurance. Uh, that uh, That is coverage for flood insurance, we've been cautioned, is more difficult for the private insurers to provide. Uh, so when, you're, when we're comparing plans, pay particular attention to that. Um, but yeah, we, uh, there are some that will provide a competitive quote, so we will obtain those and, and have a report on them. Um, okay. As if it has asked to come and, and present to the board, if we'll have them. I don't know if the other insurers will or not, so in pretty early discussions with them. Yeah. It should just be quick quotes. And the, the one with, I was on the losing side of this argument. Um, but the one thing that I did say that I think is really important is for us to understand the things that passive provides that a typical insurer may not provide. So we'll have this discussion. I think we should yeah. stop here because we still have a lot on our agenda and we'll have this discussion. That's part of why they want to present. Uh, it is. The only reason I think it's pertinent is I think Brian's going to spend a lot of time on this and we were talking about our priority list a little while ago and that wasn't on there. Um, <clears throat> well, we have to have insurance. We, we do. My, my point back then was this is the wrong time of year to be thinking about this if we want but I lost the argument, so. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that most of my time that's going to be spent on this has been spent, you know, uh, making contact, providing uh, property schedules and, and all that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll carry through. Okay, so we'll talk about this next time. Yep. Uh, next up, adoption of Ever, Evergreen Ledge Cemetery plot map. I would motion to adopt it as presented. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Me. Aye. Aye. Aye, had it. Great. As a, as a aside to that, um, currently, I correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but I think you come back to the board for each and every lot that is sold. Do we do we feel that if we have that now and Brian could say, I can give you a deed for lot 67 that the board needs to approve each of those deeds? Or is it something that the deed is now pro forma enough that we can leave that in Brian's hands? I think it'd be delegated. I too. I'm sure Mark wants to, Mark <laughs> wants to approve them, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> each plot you want to approve, right, Mark? Definitely. Yeah, no, I think that's totally fine. I was being sarcastic. Mark does not want to approve them. Uh, so I'm totally fine with Brian taking that lead. Uh, Thanks, do Mark. we need to make that a, a formal motion as part Let's of? Let's do it. So do we? We we, did, we already did the other one. Right. I, I would move that having adopted the plot plan that we authorized Brian to issue deeds for the new portion 
where there are plots assigned. Um, that is all the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. You good, Donna? Yep. I haven't checked in with you yet tonight. Last question, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, ARPA Winter Place Thinking Grant Opportunity. So last year, uh, Dean Lehuyer had applied for an AARP winter <clears throat> placemaking grant uh, for improvement and, and kind of general running of the ice rink in uh, or on Legion Field. Pretty good success. It's the grant program is available again, and you're interested <coughs> in applying again. Um, <clears throat> now, if, if and I'm Sorry, I wasn't able to clarify this with you earlier, but last year the town gave permission for you as a village trustee for the village to go off for this. And this year you're asking for just the no. town to. It, it is, I put on the uh, uh, application, I did put the village of Johnson. Okay. And I did get permission from the trustees to put their name on the application. Good. So do you need anything from the town at this point or just uh, informational at this point? Oh. Yeah. So it's our property and uh, D has also asked for a letter of support. And we have the same letter from last year that we could repurpose? Yeah, I don't think that we need, I don't think I need to do anything more than change dates. Well, well motion to repurpose last year's support letter. And to authorize permission? Not authorize permission to apply for the ARP to, to use our property. Use property to use Legion Field. Second. Any right. motion in a second? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 I thought we, that was I realized there was a grant involved in that day. It was it was very successful. I thought it was. wonderful. Okay. So I, I would like to tell you this. Uh, it's not going to change the field, but it's going to change um, the left. We want to change the left thing um, that the ice rink gets put on because there's a nine inch difference from one end to the other. So I've talked to Greg Petro to see if he can do that kind of thing. And um, he is considering it. I don't know if he can do it this year. Uh, but if you can, that might happen before the ground freezes. So okay? we'll need to circle back on that. Um, uh, there's been other discussions and other requests about leveling the field. So I definitely, before we make any changes on there, we definitely need to make sure that everybody's asking for the same thing. The oven committee? Oven and Tuesday Night Live have also right. asked. Right. We met and that was an agreement because the ice, the rink requires way more water because of the unlevel uh, ground and <coughs> at the same time, and it would create better ice if that field were level. So. That would be a separate discussion, a separate motion altogether. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that that's in the. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll we'll talk more about that uh, before we go forward. But I'll get you letter of support for for this tomorrow. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. you also brought up the broken window at Mill Park Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Don't run away just yet. So. Um, Okay, so the broken window at Old Mill Park, that's the one that we had been contacted about back in the summer. <clears throat> Jason helped and crew helped with putting something up so that animals weren't getting in and out, ultimately, and rain wasn't getting in and out, but it's not the final. No. So, uh, yeah, we have in the Old Mill house, there's a broken window. Um, we have money in our regular maintenance fund to just do it. Um, my suggestion is that rather than dragging it out with the discussion about cost sharing with the village that we do this and we figure out cost sharing later. The question I have is, do we need to put a window in? Windows are expensive and I can't imagine that house is well insulated. 
I can't imagine a high quality window is going to make any difference to draft. Um, but also, if that area is not being used, why put a window in? Should we just be boarding it up and putting insulation in? Like making it look nice and boarding it up? Where is it? It's upstairs. So it's upstairs uh, facing the garages, and it's the window that is like, you know, the windows. A witch's window? Witch's window. Witch's window. Yeah. Um, it's one of those windows that's like this. And I think it's one, one pane. I don't think you have to replace the whole window. And what I was, I mean, all the heat goes upstairs. There's no door, goes straight up. And I think um, we have a lot of good seamstresses. I think we can put a quilted um, curtain in the doorway and that will prevent the heat from going up. Up the stairs. Up the stairs. Yeah, and my guess is you're losing heat through the ceiling too. Sure. Um, losing guess. heat Jason, through everything. Do you want to add something? Uh, yeah, there's, there's two panes missing, but it's the glazing around the mall that's cracked all off. So it's not going to be a wind or rainstorm. Um, it's a wall. <laughs> Did that, that stop, stop, Did that stop mean, yeah. the wind? <laughs> stop the animals too. Uh, I guess. Yeah. So, um, are we looking to replace? The window, or I'm not suggest. I don't really. Know. We're I'm gonna we're gonna need approval from the village trustees either way. We do. We we need right. approval. It's, it's jointly owned, so I would. Can, they approve the Can we make a motion to spend up to however much? And then is that an actual figure? I don't. Up to how much? I'm sorry. Yeah, it'd be handy, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know how much, I mean, I do know how much a small window costs me, but I don't know how much these things cost. Is this a, are we talking about a broken window pane? We're or talking about a window pane, but also the, you probably didn't hear Jason. Couple. The uh, coupling, <laughs> is that what it's called? Couple. Oh, a couple of them. It's the, the glazing. Glazing around the windows also cracking. He's thinking that just the pane replacement isn't going to cut it. Oh my God. Last that LL, they're on for all the big months or months that are building. Just take LL on the grass. Oh. Can we just do that? Do we really have to? Can we just act like I, I, and talk to the village and just do it? I think that, I mean, we, we do have to get at least their tacit approval on this because it is a jointly owned shared property. Yes. Yeah, so but I think that if we're just paying for it ourselves, um, do you guys know how to glaze? I actually do. Renting one of those cherry pickers is what, like, or well, just got a bucket truck. Yeah, I was gonna say, a bucket truck. <laughs> can you reach it with a bucket truck? <laughs> okay, so. We can make that offer that we'll redo the window if they'll supply the yeah. truck. If you talk so to if Eric, they lift you up in the truck, are you willing to do it? Is the question. I, yeah, I will do it. They can't lift him up. Probably can't lift you up. I think if they it's can, be, they I don't think they can lift you up. Oh, okay. But we can assist with the process. Okay. Well, Brian, I'll go down and look at it with you tomorrow sometime if you want. I don't think we. No one needs to look at it. Mark. Do you yeah. need a motion? Do it. If, I guess there's support from the town to repair the window if the village it. supports it. We're all saying fix it. We're good. Yeah. Brian, Jason, you have the action from our side. Do you want to take it from the village side? Yes. Awesome. Let's get all this right. thing done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Health officer reappointment. That's no, Tracy. Yep. Health officer BJ and Bean are all three of them are. Oh, shit. Uh, Tracy is our lead health officer. It's not uh, called lead, it's called something else. Deputy health officer. I don't remember if it's called, the, the others are deputy. I don't remember if she's just called the health officer or if she's called chief or, or whatever. Is that a motion to reopen? Wait, 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 wait. Let's hear first. Yeah. Did you hear from Tracy? I did hear from Tracy. I've heard from everybody that they're interested in continuing to serve. Okay. Um, 
So can we motion to reappoint health can officers I, in their current position? Well, can you just wait a second? I have some more questions. Um, can we just, I'm just curious, like how much of the health calls each person has actually been responding to this past year? I don't have a statistic on that, but I know that it has, I think Dean has been our, our most regular responder. BJ has responded to quite a few, uh, but I, I believe. And Tracy has responded to fewer than the other two? Yes. Uh, I am still appointed and I've responded to one. Does Tracy have other duties beyond what the others have? Responsibilities beyond what the others have? I don't believe so. I don't think that the appointment confers any additional responsibility. Does it give her any additional pay or? It does. She receives a slightly higher stipend than the other two. Okay. What do the other two receive? There's a raised it. Is it 500? No, it's more than that. I want to say 1,500. For each of them, or yeah. is the health officer more than the other I thought it was each. Do you know what's the plan? Yeah. It probably has its own line. It does. Yeah. Yeah, but which section are they going for? Public safety. No. Are you sure? No, animal yeah. control is under public safety. Rosemary. So they're reimbursed on a stipend, not on a per call basis. Right. For health calls. For health calls. Yeah. Maybe that's something we should talk Are about. Are they all up to reappoint you? Um, sorry. Uh, I actually, I didn't receive a response to this yet, but I think the only one who is literally up for reappointment right now is me. Um, and and Tracy. And Tracy, okay. Um, and I have had inquired with the state if we could just get everybody on the same schedule. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to do this. We could just do this once for everyone. Um, so I'd appreciate if the board directed re all reappointments and then we'll find out if. I'm confused. Who are we reappointing tonight? The two that are up are myself as deputy and Tracy as health officer. Do you get paid? No. The budget has $2,500 in it. Yes. That's why I've responded to $2,500. Total. 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 So it would be 1000 for one and 500 for the others? Or you think it's more than that? That might be. Only it might be a thousand and seven fifty. Seven fifty, yeah. I, that sounds right to me, but I'm sorry, so, I don't have it. I asked the question about calls because I think that we should rectify this in budget season. Not tonight. But if we reappoint, when do they get paid? In December. And they get paid for the following year, or for is this it retro? Like it's. Well, it's for the whole year or calendar year, fiscal year. So they should yeah. get they get paid in the, in December for a fiscal year. When does their fiscal year start for their pay? July of the year before they get paid. Yeah. They get paid in the middle year. of their term mm -hmm. of their of the fiscal year. Yes. A bunch of uniqueness here. And the others get reappointed when? They'll be reappointed, I believe, next year. So it's at this same time of year, though. Yes, it, it is. You can. They only make changes once a month, but the annual uh, period to make reappointments is October. Can I make motion? No, wait a second. I have another question. I don't understand. In those reappointments, how do we determine who it? Who is whatever chief health and officer. deaf and deputy? Who's just who's health officer and who's deputies? When did we determine that? Once a year in October. 
So right now, when we appoint everybody, we're also determining who is in what role. Yes. Now you can make a motion. Well, they appoint all officers at our appointment meeting. I know. That's a good question. Wouldn't that make sense? I know. Good question. Uh, uh, state. There I was saying, uh, the state of Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. So I motion to reappoint Tracy and Brian in their current positions. And if the state returns Brian's request about making all of that on the same term to reappoint BJ and D. That's perfect. Okay. Anyway. Go ahead. So you've got a motion and a second. We can. Yep. Um, so why do we have three deputies and one health officer? I guess. At this point, with the coverage that we have, I'd be happy to give it up. Uh, I was only serving as kind of a a backup, and I've only had to do that to fill in once in the last year, uh, where we weren't able to get coverage from one of our our regular dedicated health officers. If there is a health order drafted, do you assist with them in the formal process of drafting a health order? I do, and I don't see any reason why that would have to change if I was or wasn't a health officer. They are the ones witnessing it, so they are the ones that have to sign off on it. I provide some assistance with making sure that it complies with the statutory requirements, which I would do anyway, just so that we, you know, are, are doing the process correctly. Um, so from the amendment to remove Brian, I think I'm hearing it's free insurance. If Brian is I, I don't really care if you keep me on. Like I said, I, I'm. If, it, if, it, if his name is still on there and. For some reason, somebody can't issue a health order. He could sign. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And that has happened. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let's have it. Um, can we talk about the roles in which each of them are establishing now? Because I would propose that I been pulled into a few different things around health orders and uh, I spent a lot of time talking to Dean, not so much everybody else, I talked to DJ a little bit, never talked to Tracy ever. Uh, and I do feel like the weight is on not so much Tracy right now. I think we should swap roles and how we swap them based on the effort they put in, I think would be great. Uh, but if we do it differently, I guess I don't really care. Um, but, but I don't think, I think that whoever's pulling the most weight should be in the higher of the roles. Or should we change the pay structure to per call instead of a spike? We should do per call. We really should, yes. The conversation with us. Yeah, I think we should do that. I, be, yeah. I think that might be a do you, but in the meantime, we should swap the roles. So, would you like to make a motion? But because you just not, made a motion to reappoint Tracy to tell us. Right. But Dean's not technically up unless the state gets back to Brian. I think that it's going to work out, but we definitely could change someone's role. Yeah, I don't think there's any prohibition against us changing the role. Yeah. There's just a form that has to be filled out. That, yeah, we can definitely do that at any time of, of changing somebody's. Well, not they only do it, make changes once and a that month. That can be once a month. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we could make the change, you know, if we wanted to make the change to make Dean Health Officer. So I make a motion to make uh, Dean our Health Officer and Tracy the Assistant for the Deputy. Oh. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good. All right. 
Um, just some, uh, do we need, yeah. Executive session. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, I motion that premature contract. Should, sorry, before you motion it. Should we do the fifth employee first? Then we can come out and continue fifth employee in public meeting. Then Jason can leave, and then we can go into the next. To that point, I'm, I am prepared to make a motion that I believe the discussion of the fifth employee should be done in executive session because it could potentially have union ramifications. Okay. So I don't sure. know if that changes your thing. It doesn't change. It does, yes. doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're saying we need to have the complete before contract is what you're saying either way. Mm. No, he's saying that. We say I'm, I'm prepared to make a motion. Let Make me, your motion. Go ahead. I would move that this discussion of the fifth employee um, may lead to uh, what's the wording you've got? Uh, uh, premature disclosure. Premature disclosure may um, disadvantage the town. That's the two part motion. That's the first part. That's the first part. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the second part of the motion would be to enter executive se session for the purpose of discussing discussing the fifth of employee program, employee inviting um for the second part of uh, Brian Rosemary um okay. okay. The second second the second part of all those in favor. Aye. 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 We are in executive session at not at 8.58 p.m. Why not? Fine for four hours. Just slip in. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Mark will be on the creator. It'll be good. <laughs> Uh, Are we recording? Yeah. We're recording now. Right. Okay. okay, we consented out of executive session. I want you to post a uh, job for a uh, public works employee. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yep. All second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. I vote aye. I have it. So, yes. You've got a roll call. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Mark? Yes. Duncan? Nay. Eric? Nay. I have aye. Aye. Okay. I have it. Okay. Next up on our agenda is an update on contract negotiations. A motion that premature disclosure uh, contract negotiations may substantially disadvantage the town. Sorry. And second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have an aye, Mark? Yes. I'm sorry you're not hearing me. Um. I have it, so we are into Dan, I motion to enter into executive session to discuss those communications as allowed by 1 PSA 313A1. Sorry. And all those in favor? Aye. And Jason. Aye. Okay, I have it. We're in executive session at 951.